Hey everyone, Mark from Guitar Notes here, bringing you the history of the wah pedal in four minutes or less. So let's not waste any time and go back to the birth of this famously funky effect. Towards the end of the 1950s, guitarists were looking for ways to expand the range of tones available from the electric guitar. One such player was Chet Atkins, who developed a DIY effect with a wah-like expressiveness. This early experiment can be heard on the songs Hot Toddy and Slinky, and gives a very brief teaser of the type of effect that would later become commonplace. However, it wasn't until 1966 when the wah as we know it came into being. While working for Warwick Electronics, who owned the rights to the Vox name in the United States, engineer Bradley J. Plunkett placed the mid-range boost pot into the housing of a Vox volume pedal and created the first wah-wah. How and why did this happen? Well, it's a long story, but I'll try and keep it brief. In 1966, Beatlemania was still in full swing in America, and Warwick were looking to capitalise by repurposing the Vox Super Beetle as a transistor rather than valve amplifier. Dubbed the Vox Amplifonic Orchestra, this new amp will be just one part of a range of signal processing and amplification products for big bands and orchestras. While working on the Amplifonic range, Plunkett experimented with a transistorized solid state mid range boost circuit. Connecting it to an oscillator, he noted the interesting muting effect and had band leader Bill Page play his saxophone through the circuit. Originally marketed as a product for brass and woodwind, the Vox Wawa was released to the public in February 1967, bearing trumpet player Clyde McCoy's name and endorsement. Shortly afterwards, Warwick's sub-brand, the Thomas Organ Company, released their own rebadged version of the wah, dubbed the Crybaby. However, Thomas neglected to trademark the Crybaby name and many imitation pedals began to appear, primarily from Italy, where both the Vox and Crybaby were made. Of course, the wah has evolved many times since the original Vox and Crybaby models. From optical to switchless, Technological advances have led manufacturers worldwide to try and improve on the original wah circuit, with varying results. Morley's optical range have been hugely popular, with Steve Vai using them as a crucial part of his sound, and digital wahs such as the Boss PW10 have been offering players a huge range of tones all in one box. Even Jim Dunlop, the current manufacturer of Crybaby pedals, has innovated wildly over the years. Offering no less than 14 different signature models, Dunlop's huge range includes customised crybabies for Eddie Van Halen, Kirk Hammett, Joe Bonamassa, Slash, Zach Wilde and more, each with their own sounds and features. So there we have it, a very brief history of the wah pedal. But which wah pedal is your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, remember to subscribe to Guitar Nerds because we've got loads more videos coming your way soon. Thanks very much, we'll see you next time.